Don't be sad about goodbye. Because this was all for you. Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another how to play guide. And this one is going to be for the upgraded version of the greatest character in Epic 7 history. I'm, of course, talking about New Moon Luna. I will go over almost everything you could want to know about the character, including her stats, her skills, some possible endgame equipment builds for you to try, and as always, some coveted matchup knowledge if World Arena is your thing. Let's not waste any more time though, and get right into it by starting with Luna stats. New Moon Luna is a light mage of the Libra Zodiac symbol. Her stat line is unique to her. Taking a look at her stat line, she has 1039 attack, 613 defense, 6034 health, 124 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. This translates to average defense amongst 5 star mages in Epic 7, as well as the highest health and fastest speed amongst all mages in Epic 7. The only drawback to New Moon Luna's stats is the 0% starting effectiveness. It's Luna. Of course her stats were going to be broken. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Luna, as well as New Moon Luna, is voiced by Anna Graves. She is also the voice of Kisei, Judge Kisei, and Yoon Ryong. She is a professional voiceover artist who has lent her voice to many game series from companies such as Square Enix, Bethesda, and Activision Blizzard. She's also incredibly well known for doing promos and trailers. There's a reason that she does all of the PVs opposite Cassandra Lee Morris for this year's World Championship, and she's also the voice of the game's introductory cutscene. Arise, it does not end here. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Luna as well as New Moon Luna is voiced by Marina Inoue, a legendary voiceover artist, in my opinion, who had her first major role as Yoko Littner from Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann. Most New Age anime fans, though, will know her as the voice of Armin from Attack on Titan. And for those of you who play Gacha, she currently voices the Admire Squad Captain, Helm from Goddess of Victory Nikkei, as well as Officer 148, Ju Yuan from Zenless Zone Zero. It's hollow justice at best. New Moon Luna's S1 is Radiant Strike. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier, as well as a 12% max health multiplier. Luna gains 15-20% to combat readiness upon use, depending on Malagora. <laughs> Time to end our twisted fate. At this point in Epic 7's lifespan, Radiant Strike is a fairly standard basic attack. The multipliers on the move, I must say though, are actually pretty good for a Hellscaler, until you remember that New Moon Luna only has about 6,000 health. 6,000 health for a mage is insane. Remember, it's the best in the game as we talked about in the stats section, but when you compare it to warriors or knights, it's actually not all that impressive. Before we talk about Luna's skill too though, I think it's important that we take a second to appreciate the most massive thing about Luna. That of course being her signature skill, her S3, Moon's Judgment. You acquire three souls upon use, and it has a four to seven turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is a non-attack skill that dispels all buffs from all enemies before sealing and making them unable to be buffed for two turns. It also states that at the start of the first battle, New Moon Luna gains skill effect nullifier once. In case you forgot, seal is a debuff that states that passive skill effects do not activate and can only apply to heroes. And skill effect nullifier, which is a new effect as of the recording of this video for New Moon Luna, states... It nullifies an effect from skills of enemy heroes as well as their artifacts. For the sake of peace, I'll be the villain I have to be. You don't deserve my mercy. Let's take a second now to talk about skill effect nullifier just so that we're all on the same page. Skill effect nullifier means that the first skill effect in a fight against Luna has no effect. For example, if Zio were to hit her with his skill 3, bow down before me, the strip portion would be ignored, but then the silence and combat readiness pushback would take effect. If Urban Shadow Shu uses her skill 3 Operation Cream Pastry, for example, the end of turn bonus damage effect on injuries would be ignored. That first interaction though with Zio, I think is the most important one to highlight. Since the buff removal is commonly the first action or effect on a skill, 
that's the portion that gets ignored by the skill effect nullifier. If Luna has immunity on her after the buff removal is ignored, all subsequent effects cannot affect her. It is for this reason that immunity is the highest priority set for her, and I will not be considering any other sets for this character in this video. Having this character be unaffected by pretty much every one of your opponent's opening actions, aside from a character like Lua, is stupidly powerful. It's the reason New Moon Luna is top tier as I am recording this video. And all of this is before we actually even talk about what the skill does, not what it just passively grants Luna. It is undoubtedly one of the most backbreaking effects we've ever gotten in Epic 7. A full strip of the enemy team and all of its buffs, hitting them with unbuffable to completely halt any further setup, as well as seal to disable their passives. All of this, if it hits, is pretty much lights out for your opponent. Their only hope is to either 1. Resist it, or 2. Have a cleanser to actually get rid of all of the debuffs. If they don't, well, at this point, Luna's team has pretty much free reign to just systematically dismantle you however she chooses with whichever teammate she chooses. I said resist Moon's judgment, but I guess I should probably take this time to talk about New Moon Luna's Soul Burn, which, you guessed it, for the cost of 20 souls, Moon's judgment ignores effect resistance. And of course, New Moon Luna is a mage, which means she can hold Ancient Book as her artifact, which means that she starts with 20 souls. Part of this character's core strength is this Soul Burn and the threat of the fact that it can be available as soon as a game starts. It forces your opponents in World Arena to draft two cleansers for fear of having one of them banned out or using their premium ban protection on a specific cleanser. Dedicating that many resources just to stopping this one skill allows you to trap players in the draft portion and leave them without key pieces to stop you and your strategy. If you want to learn more about how to draft New Moon Luna from a legend level player, I highly recommend checking out Coven's guide on the subject, which I will link down in this video's description. Above all, a sharpened spear is a cruel truth. Time to end our twisted fate. Finally, we come to New Moon Luna's skill 2, Demon Sealing Spear. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier as well as a 20% max health multiplier. It has a two turn cooldown. It is a single target attack with a 100% chance to defense break the target for one turn. It also increases New Moon Luna's combat readiness by 50%. A successful attack, meaning that your opponent doesn't dodge the attack or you don't miss due to blind buff, results in the enemy team taking damage equal to 16% of New Moon Luna's max health. This additional damage is affected by each of the target's defense as well as any damage sharing effects. You have weakness all over. What do you know about me? Moon's Judgment is no doubt one of the strongest skills in the entire game. It being backed up though by Demon Sealing Spear, in my opinion, is downright terrifying. Throughout the history of competitive E7, characters like Angel of Light and Angelica have been built with various different speeds to throw off the rotation of their opponents and their ability to cleanse the debuffs. Meta cleansers are, say, 230 speed in a meta? Well, then you should build your Angel of Light and Angelica at 220 speed, wait for the cleanser's turn to pass, and then unload all of your debuffs and leave the rest of the team stranded without the ability to do anything. Demon Sealing Spear's 50% combat radius means if the time isn't right to pull the trigger on Moon's Judgment, you can simply just reposition Luna to the middle of the combat radius bar and wait for a more opportune time. Even worse for opponents is the 100% defense break on the move. You can put an opponent between a rock and a hard place where if they don't cleanse the defense break, you get to kill a key target, and if they do cleanse it, well, then they can't actually cleanse the Moon's Judgment that's going to happen on Luna's next turn. Demon Sealing Spear also does pretty considerable damage with its splash effect. For the builds in this video, I'm going to show you a table here on your screen for Luna's health versus the various different defense ranges of opponents you can expect to fight. As you can see, you can realistically expect around 1700 to 3800 damage on all enemy targets, again based on their defense. That's an average of around say 2500 damage to all enemies every time you use this move. 
which, if you're paying attention, is a more consistent and higher damage output than Urban Shadow Shu and her passive skill. Also, the move is on a two-turn cooldown, meaning it's pretty spammable. Like, really, really spammable. Since New Moon Luna is a mage, she has access to Etika's Scepter, which has a 50% chance to decrease the cooldowns of the character by one turn. That means that if you high roll, you can use Demon Sealing Spear every single turn. 2500 damage to every member of the enemy team each turn adds up really, really quickly and makes it so that you don't ever really need to focus on crit stats on this character if you are the right combination of tanky and fast. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, max the S3 Moon's Judgment first for the reduced cooldown. After that, focus on the S1 Radiant Strike for the combat readiness. You don't need to invest any more Mulligora at this point into New Moon Luna if you don't want to. The only thing you gain from putting Mulligoras into the S2 Demon Sealing Spear is increased initial damage. It does the same amount of splash damage regardless of how much you Mulligora the skill. All the nuance of New Moon Luna was basically discussed in the previous section. So, all that's left now is to talk about how to build her. Luna only really needs three stats. Health, for Demon Sealing Spear as well as just general bulk. Speed, so you can resolve Moon's Judgment in a timely fashion. And effectiveness, in case you need to land defense breaks or for some reason you can't soul burn her S3. How much of each depends entirely on you as a player and what you are comfortable with. Let's talk about recommended sets and right side gear stats first, as these will most likely be constant no matter what stat spread you decide to go with on the character. Speed set is going to be the go-to in the current meta for this character, as it's a much more proactive meta than reactive. That's not to say that counter set is bad on New Moon Luna, but taking as many turns as possible can absolutely bury your opponents at advantage, which is why speed is ideal from what I've noticed on this character. The two piece offset for all builds in this video should be immunity due to what we discussed with skill effect nullifiers in the previous section. For right side pieces, health percentage necklace is going to be the ideal choice to keep our bulk high on Luna but you can use whatever you want if your goal is to just chase the highest speed total. A similar story here for the ring as well. Health percentage is going to be ideal, but effectiveness percentage or whatever you want depending on your speed requirements can work out for you. As is the case most of the time, boots are of course going to be speed so that we can take turns in a timely fashion. Now on to the actual stat lines and artifacts. If you are an aggro or cleave player looking to play New Moon Luna, the recommended stat line here on your screen is going to be the one for you. Forego all other stats to try to push Luna as fast as she could possibly go. The best ones usually clock in at around 300 plus speed, but you can use whatever works best for you. If you're going to be aggressive with this character, the artifact of choice is going to be Ancient Book as this gives us the 20 souls that we need to soul burn Moon's Judgment on turn one. That's what's going to get the rest of our team's offense started. If you are more of a turn 2 or tank down player looking to use Luna, your recommended stat line is actually going to be quite a bit different. This version of Luna seeks to abuse the power of Demon Sealing Spear with higher HP totals and effectiveness to land that defense break. Don't let that fool you though into thinking that this Luna is slow. Most of the best ones clock in at over 270 speed, but I feel like anything over 250 will work just fine. For the artifact of choice, Etika's Scepter is going to be really good as it lets you leverage your higher HP totals so you can spam out that Demon Sealing Spear every single turn and slowly chip away at the enemy team. If you like to switch between aggressive and passive playstyles based on the matchup or simply just don't know what to play, here's a third set of stats that is squarely in the middle of both builds. This was originally how I played New Moon Luna upon release and I find that it works just fine. My recommended stats here assume that you're on Ancient Book, but Etika's Scepter should also work just as well. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. First, we're going to talk about teammates and how they pertain to Moon's Judgment. Luna's skill 3 is the name of the game with the character. If you can land it on the entire enemy team and they don't really have a good answer or follow-up to it, your win is pretty much guaranteed. Since the most common way to get rid of all the debuffs from Moon's Judgment is with a cleanser, you're probably going to want to focus on punishing that first and foremost. Most cleansers in the game use a non-attack skill to do so. Unless they're like Red Lilius, it's almost assuredly going to be a non-attack skill is the most common way that your opponent is going to try to get out of Luna's trap. 
Therefore, playing characters like Red Politis or Green Selene are excellent answers, especially Selene after her rework. She is one of the strongest heroes currently in PvP in Epic 7. Another thing that you could do is use a character that might be even worse for your opponent if they spend their precious cooldown, somebody like Death Dealer Ray or even like Nequal. If you can just reset the opponent's entire team and then fall with Moon's Judgment, that's probably going to be enough to be lights out against the opponent. And if they use their only cleanse, then Death Dealer Ray and his Cloud of Death is basically, again, just a really feels bad scenario for your opponent. New Moon Luna, because of the fact that she has an AoE seal, does also open up a ton of avenues to cleave your opponent or control them with characters that you probably haven't been using in a while. Characters like Edda, for example, as well as Red Araminta. Araminta is actually surprisingly very, very strong in the current meta as of the recording of this video. Next up, let's talk about bad matchups for New Moon Luna, and I'm going to start with the two most obvious ones, which are Lua as well as Bellion. Lua is the only character that by herself can shut down New Moon Luna on turn one. Lua takes turn one, tries to attempt to strip and sleep New Moon Luna, which gets eaten by the skill effect nullifier, takes an extra turn, uses her S3 Sweet Talk, and resets New Moon Luna, and therefore you're left with a Luna that can only Radiant Strike on turn one, which isn't very impactful and lets your opponent completely dictate the pace of the entire encounter. Bellion's also a pretty obvious hard answer. Her S2 passive, Shackles of Suppression, forbids you from gaining souls, which means that if you're on an Ancient Book build, well, then you can't guarantee get a seal on the Bellion's entire team. And since Luna's biggest drawback in her stat line is her 0% base effectiveness, well, then realistically, you might not have the ability to actually sabotage the characters that you're trying to win against, such as, say, maybe Blood Moon Haste or a resistance version of Dragon Bride Senya. There's also some more dicey matchups in Ran and Peyra. These characters don't really hard counter New Moon Luna per se because your skill effect nullifier protects you, but they will reliably outspeed you at high level, and that means that they can dictate the terms of engagement and set up an entire team that can counter you. For example, Ran can just use Eternal Wanderer Ludwig and just cleave through your entire team before Luna even gets a turn. And then obviously Peyra has things like Requiem Rowana to set up their own control chokehold or use Jacko Valentine to cleave specific key pieces of your team. Lastly, obviously the cleansers that New Moon Luna can't really interact with like Laia, Infinite Horizon Akades, or even Mediator Quirk, also probably not good for your game plan. Finally, we come to good matchups, which is pretty much everyone else, especially if they're slower characters with strong passives like Blood Moon Haste or Dragon Bride Senya. New Moon Luna forces your opponent into a really bad scenario when you pick her. They either let you dictate the terms of engagement, or they have to try to speed up and be the aggressor in the matchup, which is something that a lot of players aren't really comfortable with. Smart banning and team building in game modes like World Arena can even take away your opponent's ability to reliably contest your aggression, which forces them on the back foot. It's why New Moon Luna is commonly picked first as of the recording of this video. She's just that good at the moment. The last thing I'll say is, it'll be interesting to see how this video ages, as I don't really know how we top a full strip, full seal, spammable defense breaking character that's also a speed demon and has the bulk of a bruiser. And that's going to do it for how to play New Moon Luna. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comment section below. And while you're down there, again, don't forget to check out Coven's Legend Draft Guide for New Moon Luna. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. And like and subscribe for more Epic 7 guides. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.